today I'd like to talk uh, some about the um, process we go through uh, of uh, planning ahead for the coming year, which is 2022. Well, we'll start uh, setting uh, and getting our plan together, uh, probably even, uh, let's say, in August. We're looking at our past fertilization process and uh, applications that we've applied. And so August is the time when we decide which farms we want to take soil tests after the harvest season. And uh, of course, we need to take those soil probes before the ground freezes. So as soon as we harvest, we'll have a, a company that we hire and they'll go out and take these soil probes because these soil tests we believe are good for four to five years. So we won't uh, test every farm that we have the same year. We'll take a portion of our farms, then we'll soil test those areas, and then the next year we'll soil test some other farms. And so after four or five years, we'll have all of our different farms soil test. Then once we get to that end of that four or five years, we'll go back to the original set of farms that we've taken those soil tests, and we'll take a test again. This gives us a great idea of our fertility if we were low in certain areas with phosphate or potash, which are couple of our main nutrients that we need to grow good corn and soybean crop. We are able to uh, apply fertilizer in a variable rate as we're going through the field, the phosphate and potash, sulfur, whatever we put into this batch, the new fertilizer applicators are able to blend this different products and mix and spread it into the area at a variable rate going through the field because all sections of the fields are different and the higher yield you have, the more nutrients you use. So you need to apply at least enough to bring that to a mid-range, to a higher level. We do that through these tests that we take. But we also use our maps from our combine when we're harvesting. Our combine can register this, and so some areas of the fields will yield higher, we're removing more nutrients, and in doing so, we need to apply more nutrients. So we use the maps from the combine on the yield, and we use the maps when we take the soil test, uh, we lay those over, and we can see you know, if we're removing more uh, nutrients or not. We don't want to over-apply fertilizer, and so that's another reason we do this, because it's a waste. It also can uh, be leaching out. So these are good, good tools that we can use, really have helped us. We really become a lot more efficient and um, sustainable in doing it this way. So uh, our yields have raised because the, some areas that before we had these technologies that we're using now, sometimes we, we might think, hey, we can't get good yields on these fields. Because you used to take a uh, soil test, maybe on an 80 acres, you might take six, eight samples out of that whole 80 acres. Well, now if we take it every two acres, four or five years when we come back to soil test again, we're able to test those spots really, really close within inches of where we've taken the soil test before. 